Hey guys, welcome back to the Model Railroad. I'm Dan here as always. In this video we're going to be looking at the overview of what I've gotten accomplished so far. Since the last update video I've gotten most of the scenery done on the first side of the modular section of this Model Railroad. This is Fostoria East End. So this is basically where I started because there was a lot of key structures and a key crossing scene that I wanted to work on first uh, before I got into the more complex part which on this side would be the yard portion. Uh, there's a lot more ballasting involved over here, and though the, uh, the scenery is simpler, there's a lot more work and track work alone. Uh, and that's another reason why I kind of wanted to start in this section. Also, just so I could have a specific section to kind of show more scenery off, uh, be able to kind of learn some of these new techniques. Uh, keep in mind, I've never done scenery this extensive before. I've used a lot of new techniques that I've never done before. This is a first attempt at using static grass, making my own trees, uh, putting in a crossing, all kinds of crazy stuff went into this that I've honestly never done before. I've had experience building modules, as you guys have seen. Um, I have a couple different modules that I run trains on, uh, but for a full model railroad, this was a lot of work, and I had to learn a lot. And thankfully, YouTube is a great learning tool uh, because there's so many videos and stuff that you can watch on here, which is great. But for this video, we're going to be looking at what I've gotten done, and I think you guys are going to be real, real happy uh, with how this turned out. I personally am extremely happy uh, with the way everything came out. There's a lot of crazy stuff to go over. And because this module section is pretty big, I might have to cut this video up in parts. We'll see how much we get done in this video, but I'll try to keep these kind of under 20 minutes if I can. So we'll go ahead and get uh, basically started where I actually started off on this model road, which is the corner modular turnout here. And then we'll go through and then kind of work our way eastward over the module. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, guys. So here we get to look at a basic overview of what I've gotten done. You can see the entire section stretches all the way to the opposite end of the garage. This is a nice long straightaway section for running trains, which is uh, awesome to be honest with you. Uh, unfortunately with the placement of the exit to the garage, the main door portion of the garage, um, I had to stop the modules here, but if I could take them all the way back I would, and I would definitely make this a lot longer. Uh, however. I just couldn't with this, the amount of uh, space that I had, so I had to cut it off here and then curve it off. In real life, obviously remember, the uh, real life CSX tracks go all the way west to Chicago and then eastward to Willard, Ohio and on to New York and just about everywhere else. They actually split off in real life, uh, the two-track main does. Uh, so obviously this is a fictional curved section, but I still tried to keep it relatively prototypical the way I did the scenery, the way the trees are laid out, the bushes, the roadway and everything else is formed exactly like how it would be in real life. And also the curve is somewhat justified in the sense because in real life there is actually a uh, southeast Y turnout uh, that leads into the CNO yard which justifies having one of the curves here, uh, which is the reason I was able to do the scenery like I did, it was actually justified. So that actually worked out pretty well. Um, but that being said, I still did have to take a little bit of liberty here uh, to kind of change a few things around. And I also made a crucial mistake, which we'll get to in a second. But this is going to basically be where we start off this review. So let's go ahead and actually look at the main track turnout to get started. So with the importance of having curves on this model road, I obviously wanted to make sure that the curves were installed and that they looked right and that they were spaced out long enough to be able to handle my 89 foot long auto racks in any of my uh, long length cars like that and still be able to look relatively realistic and prototypical and still be able to have these trains kind of being able to run them at a, a fairly realistic uh, high speed of a maximum of 60 scale miles per hour. Um, so I was trying to kind of keep that all in mind, so I started laying the track first. That was the exact first thing I did on this model road after I built the bench work. I uh, figured out the dimensions of the curves I needed. I laid this section in first uh, with using Atlas Code 100 Flex Track. I then installed it over the uh, cork road bed and figured out the exact dimensions of the curves that I needed. This particular curve section is a little bit interesting because this section leads into a spacing uh, because going into the southern module here there is actually a Y called center siding and so that is why the tracks actually get farther apart. Up to this point they're relatively close together in a prototypical uh, scale form and then as they go in this curved section they actually space apart uh, which ended up uh, working out just fine to accommodate the Y again which is uh, just down here off camera. So once I got these curves figured out, then I was able to go in, figure out where I needed to put switches in, and then I was able to work my way eastward on the model railroad, laying in the flex track and everything else. So looking at the track again, once I got all my track installed, I then made sure everything electrically was sound after I put in the feeder wires and everything else. 
a very time consuming process. I spent the entire winter doing that. And then I went in and painted the track using Rust-Oleum dark brown satin paint, uh, which is kind of flat basically. So I painted all that, cleaned off the tops of the rails, and then proceeded to start ballasting. And the ballast material I used here, along with the majority of the other scenic materials for this layout, are all Woodland Scenics products. In this case, I use dark gray ballast to try to simulate what's there in real life. Uh, and I actually used coarse ballast, keeping in mind that the real ballast is pretty coarse. Um, however, I found relatively quickly that in scale it didn't look very, very good. So actually, this entire curve section leading up to this switch just off camera is all ballasted with Woodland Scenics coarse ballast and I found very quickly that it was very hard to work with and so I ended up switching back to medium gray ballast and I basically ballasted the entirety of this model railroad with uh, medium ballast and then all the sidings and everything else were a very fine uh, mixed ballast uh, as you'll see so that's why there's kind of a variation in the ballasting here uh, but overall this section came out okay, and I'm pretty pretty happy with it There's some issues with the ballast kind of crumbling because again with the coarser ballast It has a hard time kind of tacking uh, tacking down So there's a few little areas, you know, I got to go in and kind of repair, uh, but that can all be done over time uh, Again, keep in mind this scene is basically uh, I'd say 98% complete uh, Minus a few small little details uh, But what I want to talk about here along with the ballasting of the track is that this is usually when you're studying a model road, what you want to focus on first is getting your track work done and having it work uh, as best as you can get it and then go in, do your ballast, and then try to do the scenery away from the ballast. I really recommend that because then if you have your track work installed, then everything else is fun because you can work around the ballast and blend your scenes more realistically together. A crucial thing I see a lot of modelers do when they build their model roads is they slap on the scenery and then they put their track over the scenery and then you get this unrealistic, uh, sharp, basically contrast between scenic area and then ballasted area. In real life, everything flows together very realistically and very naturally, especially older track that's been there for a while. The scenery will kind of take over and infiltrate the uh, areas around the track, and you'll have a lot of weeds growing along the right-of-way, which is what I uh, was basically trying to accomplish here with this modeling. So if we actually get a good zoomed-in look along the right-of-way here, you'll actually see how detailed the contrast between the rail and the ground and grass and following scenery is. Notice that the ballast works into the finer material that is the base of the roadbed along the area for drainage. You can see it works into a different shade of ballast which I mixed in. So I used a combination of the coarse ballast, medium ballast, and fine ballast to get that interesting little contrast here. So as the ballast works out, it gets finer. And then it works its way into a weed kind of roadbed where the weeds are sort of growing along that ballast. So that was what I worked on first. I then went in with some Woodland Scenic Static Grass here. In this case, I used a combination of four millimeter, two millimeter, seven millimeter, uh, I believe. And I basically went in and I mixed the colors together using a light green and kind of a burnt color because I was trying to model some summer grass here. Uh, this whole model road is built to uh, replicate how this area looks in about August, kind of late July. Uh, when things start drying up, the trees are fully furnished with the uh, leaves and everything else. Um, so that's what I was trying to kind of go with for the look here. But you can see how real, realistic, again, that transition is. You've got some nice bushes and things like that. Uh, and you can see you got some like little line side details like a gas marker here. Uh, just fun little things like that to kind of spice up the scene. And that works into the next part, which is talking about trees, line side details, and things like that. When I started this project, I knew right away that I wanted to do scratch-made trees because uh, what's offered in finished trees is not very good. There's not a very great variety, and they're also very expensive. So I wanted to try out some uh, newer trees by uh, Scenic Express, which are some of the best-known trees in the industry that you can get. Uh, they're relatively simple to put together. I learned how to do these relatively quick. I just basically took them out of the box, trimmed them to how I wanted them to be, kind of keeping in mind what was there in real life. I took a lot of pictures of all these scenes in real life, how they looked, what the trees looked like, how tall they were, uh, how wide they were, and I kept that all in mind as I made each one of these trees uh, by hand, keeping that in mind. Each tree has an exact purpose on this layout, and it took a lot of time to get all this figured out because each individual tree is exactly what I need it to be for the scene, and it took a lot of blending and a lot of work to get it right, and even after I got them uh, blended together, painted, and I put all the uh, scale scenics leaves and everything else on there, 
Uh, I still did a little final trimming and readjusted them as I glued them down onto the base. All this is again is foam board, so all I had to do after I got the trees done was drill a hole in the foam, insert them with some white glue, let them dry up, and you can see they're pretty well firmly in place. Now onto the bushes to finish the scene because a lot of times with this underbrush you get a lot of bushes, weeds, uh, a lot of briar patches, things like that that kind of will grow around these areas. So the key to doing that was um, using again the Scenic Express material to go in and add uh, the clump foliage and I basically put it all down around the trees, around the base of the trees and uh, also on some other little scenes to make that work and then I added some uh, leaves and things like that and then kind of blended it together with the uh, static grass. So basically how I did this, all this started off with the static grass and then I did the bushes and then I did the trees and then I basically layered everything together. Uh, you got some other little bushes that are some uh, clump foliage by Woodland Scenics glued in place and then I did all the scenery around that but all this is basically four millimeter static grass and two millimeter static grass work together. Now this massive alley portion of the model railroad was another thing that I had to kind of very carefully put in uh, how it was in real life. All this is Woodland Scenics fine ballast that I mixed together with some concrete dust and real dirt to make it look like it's pretty well mixed together and worn. You can see it looks very natural and very worn down like it's been uh, driven across many many times as the real, uh, real life area has been. So when I modeled this area I basically planned all the ballast out first and then I did all the other surrounding scenery effects. Now the major screw up here, and I'll point out right away, is that down here you can see the little exit for the siding, the switch down here. There should be another track that leads from that switch over here and actually cuts across and goes through this area. And what this track is, is the NSCSX connector track uh, that will lead to the CNO which would be west of this location uh, leading up to the 88 crossover diamond uh, near the Fostoria Rail Park. Uh, for anyone uh, familiar with the Fostoria area, you know exactly what this area is. There's an NS transfer track that leads into the BNO yard and it connects into where this switch is over here. And when I modeled the scene, I completely forgot to put it in and now I'm kind of stuck with it. Uh, it's one of those things I could go back and add it if I wanted to, but then I'd have to cut out the track section there and redo it. I'd have to tear up all this nice scenery that I did um, and modify all that, which I really don't want to do. So. It's one of those things it's, I, I, I'm able to do if I want to in the future, but for now I'm just going to live with it and uh, move on. But you can see this whole area again is ballasted and it's uh, all prototypical to what should be there in real life. This whole back area scene of this curved turnout is really awesome. I like the way this turned out and this was the first area I started using static grass on. So I used a combination of different sizes of static grass starting out to kind of see what I could recreate for say weeds and stuff like that. So. Before I did any trees, any bushes, all this was just painted foam. I then laid on some two and four millimeter static grass all along the right of way leading up to the ballast. You can see there's a lot of ballast kind of mixed in, some cinders and dirt is mixed in here. As I got closer to the track, I then switched up to some six millimeter burnt grass uh, and I applied that to look like weeds and some overgrowth kind of crowding up the area which is prototypical to this area. Again there's a lot of weeds along this right away and as you look at this you can see all those bright yellow weeds growing through the ballast leading up to the track which again is a very cool effect. You can see it looks very natural and it just blends the scene together. Here in the back you can see all those briar patches that's actually there in real life. There's an uh, area back here where there's a lot of alleys for homing and there actually used to be a crossing down in this area too which has been taken out and I'll actually show you guys one of the ends of the street that I modeled but you can see I did some of those uh, Scenic Express trees that I shredded up and applied to the area as bushes. I painted the area and then applied some foliage and then I inserted all these little trees and things like that to the scene to complete it. And you know some other little details I did the Rick's telephone poles which are highly detailed. They're all completely wired up. I added a little gas marker here and some other little details like you got some uh, railroad ties and stuff laying around in the area just to add some uh, flavor and other things, basically everything else to the scene to make it look a little bit more realistic. Looking at this area closing into the BNO CNO diamond in real life, uh, there's a cool little wooded area again that we pointed out. This is it from another angle leading up to the road crossing that used to go across the BNO here. Uh, to get to these uh, residential areas over here. Basically this was a little branch street that led from Columbus Avenue which is over here which we'll get to in a second. Um, but all this got taken out in the early 2000s and was uh, basically removed and uh, there was just basically the alley here after that and then there's the NS connector track that would lead through here. 
Again, I forgot to put that in. That's the major uh, change to the scenic area. Uh, but as you can see, the wooded area is really cool. You got some nice little details there. I got the utility poles running through the area that are all completely wired up. You have the gas marker there. For the street, I modeled this with plaster and then I did some heavy weathering effects to make it look aged. I did a lot of weathering to it and then I actually added some Rick's barriers which I weathered up with some powders. I put those in place and you can actually see the concrete pavement is actually pretty well weathered up. So if we actually uh, get over here and look at this, you can see how well I was able to blend that into the scenery. You can see the streets all cracked up. It's pretty well torn up, very heavily weathered up. Uh, you can see it's just basically blending into the ballast here, which is a really cool little effect that I did. And you can see how realistic that whole scene looks. I'm very happy with how that came out. As we get to this area here, this is actually someone's backyard. Uh, right where the wall would be is someone's house and then there's a garage because again, this is a very heavy residential neighborhood. It's kind of smack in the hood, so this whole area is kind of under-maintained. Uh, this, this is why the grass is kind of uh, very tall here. But again, this is four millimeter static grass mixed together uh, to model that. And then I just did some Woodland Scenics bushes and uh, Scenic Express shrubs to do all the other scenery leading up to this area here where there's some more trees. Uh, which is a really unique patch of trees. So I modeled that again off of photos that I've taken of this area, which I have tons of photos of to get this all right. And you can see it leads into this uh, back area here where again there's an alley and then it actually leads to a little crosswalk. You've got another utility pole here, which is all wired up and it's actually the, where the first module ends right here. You can see this is that little cutout strip. Uh, this is where the alley starts as well. So this is Columbus Avenue here. Again, this is all paved with concrete. Uh, mix and then I also used a little plaster uh, to do this so it's actually pretty cool and it's a lot more realistic and then I just painted it with acrylic. Uh, it's blended out with a little concrete dust to make it look like uh, some uh, cars have driven out of this alley and pulled some of that into the street which is pretty cool. You can see it leads in and curves into the area nearest the tracks and then leads through this alley along the right of way is how that works out. Uh, again, there's a really, really cool little uh, area here where there's a lot of weeds and stuff growing in. And you can see I modeled that with some uh, four and seven millimeter static grass. Again, that's burnt grass. And I actually added a little, uh, little more detail, mixing some dirt and some debris and other things like that in with the ballast as well. And then you got all these uh, static grass shrubs, which look really cool. You can see all that's along there again. So that basically is how I did that. That looks really cool. Back in this little scene on the opposite side of the corner here, you can see this is again that little wooded area where there's a bunch of tall trees. You have the power lines running through this area. They cross over the B&O again, and they actually cross over the old telegraph line as well. You can see there's just this little curved section where there's a little alley here, uh, a little driveway. You got some weeds growing around it. All this is done with static grass. Uh, you got some pallets, a scratch built little garage structure, which I got pictures of, and I was able to build this with styrene and modeled it, basically modeled it with the open door to kind of look realistic. Uh, but the whole wooded area was really cool and it was fun to make this. Uh, it came out really well and it only took a matter of evenings to actually accomplish this little scene. Uh, so I'm very happy with it, uh, how it looks. As we look at the actual B&O main double track uh, portion of the section here, you can see it leads into the B&O yard switch, uh, which leads eastward to the actual yard. This whole area again is my technique of starting with coarser ballast and working it out to finer ballast for more of the alleyway so the access point to get to this relay cabinet here which is prototypical, that's there in real life. Uh, there's an old pole that's been cut off and disconnected, it's still standing on the ground. Uh, little elements like that really help to make your scenes realistic and you can see I've added some little uh, bits of weeds growing through this ballast as well. This is all done with two millimeter burnt grass, static grass, again applied with my uh, Woodland Scenic Static Grass Applicator. Everything else is very unkempt. As you can see, it's very tall, burnt grass, again done with the Woodland Scenic Static Grass. Uh, we'll take a look at this at ground level to kind of get a better idea how I did all this. This is it at ground level and you can see how well everything really blends together with the grass and everything else. I know it's kind of blurry and out of focus, but you can see you got that cabinet there. And then you can really see how uh, the ground kind of spaces out. You can see how there's weeds growing through that ballast. You can see it's growing up through that. I got some shrubs growing around the base of poles. That's another key detail to add to these areas because these are usually not very well maintained and you get a lot of weeds and stuff growing along that right of way there, especially in these rural areas like this. Uh, again, with these poles, these are all where they're supposed to be. Uh, they're Rick's poles that I highly detailed. I put the cross arms on them and then I cut off and removed insulators where needed and I painted them 
each individually to look like either porcelain or glass insulators. Uh, I got the two main lines here and then I got a cable on the bottom. I just installed some little insulators to the sides of the poles. Uh, I beat them up quite a bit. I actually added a little additional wood grain to each individual pole as well by rubbing them down with some 600 grit sandpaper and then I painted them and then put them together. So that's how actually uh, that's actually how I did those poles. But you can see how realistic they look at ground level here. Now leading into one of my favorite scenes is actually someone's backyard here. And what this is is a little uh, area of residence kind of running along Columbus Avenue here. So what it is, there's an old red fence that's done with corrugated metal siding. I modeled that with structural styrene plastic from Plastruct. I painted that and I added little uh, bits of wire to it so I could just basically insert this into the foam. There's another little section here where a newer section of fencing was done and installed and that's just some uh, Alcom scale models fencing which I added some wire to to insert in the ground. It's unpainted. Uh, it looks really realistic, it's very fine scale, and you can see again as we look at this, it's blended in nicely with that static grass. It looks like uh, there's a lot of weeds growing around it. Uh, so this whole scene looks real, real nice. As we look at the little structures and everything along this track, these are all just some sheds I scratch built. Uh, you got some utility poles and stuff. All the grass is a little bit more uh, trimmed down here along the structures. Uh, but I just built that from styrene, uh, and again the fencing runs up to the main garage here which is a scratch built structure. This is all done with styrene and structural shapes. You got a little door, a little stand there, which I still have to uh, put a little main wire on. And then you got again the uh, old, older telegraph poles there running up to the crossing section there, uh, which looks real, real nice. You can see that the uh, building really does uh, complete this scene because again, it's there in real life. It's someone's garage. And then where the module actually cuts off here would actually be the house. Uh, as you can see, it leads into the driveway here. Again, this is done with real concrete, which I apply, sanded down, and then I just basically put dirt and some stone around it uh, to blend it in, as you can see. It's very well weathered up as well because this is pretty old concrete. In certain areas, I put the little uh, divider marks there where different sections of concrete were poured over time, and you can see I actually did some discoloration with an airbrush and things like that to kind of mix it up. And again, as you can see, along that right-of-way track, not only is the track weathered, but you also get this really nice little bit of uh, weeds growing up through that track along the right-of-way. And again, that's all very uh, very realistic, and it really helps to enhance the look of the scene. Uh, and that, of course, leads up to the crossing right here, which we'll get to. But again, as you can see, as an overall view of this scene, this is basically what it looks like as you see it. Uh, and again, this is where the original pole line gets cut off. You can see the cross arms all beat up and the wires are actually cut. And then they remove them and then this whole section uh, just goes and curves off. Uh, but again, uh, doing the details to the poles really helped to enhance them. And again, they're all prototypical to where they should be. Um, unfortunately, in real life, these have all been cut down now. But in my model railroad, I wanted to uh, basically include these. So now that we've gotten this modular section covered up, we can move on to the really interesting part and where things get even more interesting from here out. This is Columbus Avenue as it looks today. This is all modeled as a huge uh, portion of the scene here. This is one of the main areas where I'll be doing lots of photo shoots and things like that because in real life, this is the only accessible place you can get in uh, to get near these locations uh, around the tracks. Uh, is this crossing so and then again this is a major crossing so it gets a lot of use and of course it sees a lot of train action too uh, and if, basically when I was going in here and trying to figure out how I wanted to do this I decided that I really wanted to incorporate this crossing in the scene have it there uh, because it's such a key part of this area so what I did for this entire crossing was I modeled it with um, plaster and what I did first was lay down my roads I planned those out over and over again until I was satisfied with how things looked. I then went in and tried to model the sidewalks leading up to the crossing and then I basically went in and started putting in the compound around where it needed to be for the crosswalk sections and the actual road portion here. Uh, so there's a lot of work that went into this and there was a lot of uh, a lot of processes to doing this as well because you can't just slap all this on at once and then let it dry it'll start to crack so you got to build it up in layers uh, which took a lot of time I think this whole area took about a week uh, just to do the roads 
Uh, so I basically filled everything in and then worked everything out. Once I got all that done, I was satisfied with the gradient of the cross and everything else and it looked prototypical. I then went in and did a lot of wet sanding, dry sanding, and just continued to work this area out until everything was absolutely as smooth as I could get it. And there was no visible cracks, pores, or anything like that in the uh, plaster and any of the road surfaces, anything like that. So I got everything nice and smooth. The next thing was to paint all of the road surfaces. So as you can see, all the worn out concrete here is done with the plaster and then I just painted this with acrylics. I weathered it up quite a bit. Uh, you can see that it all is very nicely done up and it blends into the crossing which was recently replaced here in real life. So I modeled this crossing area uh, to look like it's a little bit more new. Uh, and then it is again weathered up to look like the tracks are kind of rusting around it and it's getting a lot of use. Uh, this is again a very heavily used road crossing in real life. Uh, so it gets a lot of use and it gets very worn out. It actually gets replaced probably every three years. Uh, this whole area gets changed. So I modeled it as it looks now and it came out pretty good. So let's go ahead and get a close up of the street so you can see all the detail here. As you look at the scene coming from our perspective leading up to the road crossing, you can see I actually did a little sewer cover. That is an Alcom Scale Models Photo Etch piece. I just basically embedded that into the plaster, stuck it down, and then weathered around it. You can see it's got a lot of rust coming off that uh, top. There's actually some little markings. So if you actually see here, there's some little areas where they've sprayed out uh, little indicators where patch repairs need to be done, things like that. That's very common that you see on the streets like this, especially once they're getting constantly maintained like this one is. Uh, they usually do these little chalk marks and spray marks where they use reflective uh, spray paint to mark those little areas out. So I wanted to model that and you can see I did around that sewer area. You also got some little tar repairs that are fresh and then it leads up to the crossing marker. And how I did this was I, masked, I basically masked this whole area off with tape and then I just did a rough quick spray of some white paint and then I proceeded to weather back over it with some paint to make it look worn out. Now you can see there's a lot of cracks in the road that you got the little separation lines and paving marks and things like that. It all is, uh, really helps to enhance the scene to make it look a lot more realistic. Now the actual crossing again, keep in mind, was replaced and that's why it looks different and it's a different color compared to the road. Uh, this is fresh asphalt with the black coat topping on it. So you can see it looks very natural and very realistic and I basically did this I painted it, you got the little tar mark there, and I basically painted all this to look like fresh, uh, fresher, fresher asphalt. So I just used a light mix of gray and black, mixed it together, painted this entire area. The middle portions of these crossings are concrete, and originally I wanted to do the little rubber barriers that are along the rails for protection, and I just found that I couldn't do it because the plastic styrene strips that I used actually shorted out the track. So I had to remove those and just I uh, just ended up having to use styrene strips that I cut to size and put inside the gauge of the flex track, allowing for plenty of clearance in the rail spacing uh, for trains to pass over. Uh, but in the end, it still looks realistic and it's at ground level, so it all looks prototypical. Once I did all that, I had some little cracks, some uh, areas where it's all worn out, and I blended it in, of course, with the ballast and surrounding scenery, as you can see. And then I also weathered the track rails around that. As you can see, there's a lot of rust, and that's all done with airbrush and powder work uh, to make it look weathered, as you can see. And then, of course, in real life, Columbus Avenue angles away and goes into this residential neighborhood, leading kind of more towards downtown Fostoria. And it leads into this really awesome gravel park area. You got the crossing signals here with this cool little spacing and all kinds of other fun, neat little details. Okay, so that was a lot to digest what I just showed you, and that's a compilation of about six weeks of work alone in that one section, leading up into the second section, which is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. So what I'm going to do for now is just cut this video here. Uh, we'll come back in the next part and basically continue where we left off, which is this really cool industrial scene with the tracks, the crossing, and everything else. And we'll be able to go to over uh, basically all of that in more detail in the next video. So you guys can stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Subscribe here on YouTube for more content. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.